Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to a very special Wellness Wednesday group. Uh, today, we'll have the pleasure of hearing from one of our 2023 Senior Planet sponsored athletes. Um, and there are five sponsored athletes who are excited about fitness and will be sharing updates on their health and wellness journeys uh, throughout the rest of this year. Um, but today, we have with us Senior Planet sponsored athlete Rick Clendenin. Rick is 72 years old and hails from the Midwest. And he's always been active in sports, such as basketball, racquetball, volleyball, um, but a health issue led him to discover a new sport. So today he's gonna be giving us the first of a two-part presentation all about pickleball. I'm so excited. So without further ado, I present to you all Rick Clendenin. Good morning. Uh, and Nicole, good, good job with my name because it's always hard, but uh, we shouldn't spend too much time on that. Um, yeah, um, I, I've done a lot of sports. I've always enjoyed sports. And so that's been my history. Um, I have been a very active and competitive volleyball player um, over uh, a long time. So, and now I'm 72. Uh, and last year, I, uh, actually two years ago now, I played in the volleyball national tournament, but my right knee just kept getting worse and worse. It's not got very much cartilage left in it. So the jumping and then playing four days really was causing a problem. At the same time, in a small local paper, and uh, by the way, I'm, I'm doing this from Camano Island, Washington, which is north of Seattle. And this is my, my gym. It's not really a garage, it's a gym. And um, so I'm reading this little paper. It's called The Crab Cracker. And it's, uh, there's a digital version and a little pamphlet style thing. There was two lines in there that said, do you want to learn pickleball? So, and a phone number. So I checked it out, gave him a call and went and played. Uh, learned the game and um, joined our local club, which is the Camano Stanwood Pickleball Association. And what I found out was I could do this game and it does not irritate my knee. My knee has been stable. In fact, I think it's pretty good right now over the last two years. So um, the difference in pickleball versus volleyball, volleyball, you're jumping a lot on hard floors. In pickleball, you just maybe run a few steps here, a few steps there, and then you play the game. So it was much easier on my knee. And um, I found out that I love the game and I love the club. And there's a couple aspects to the game that is different. And, um, you know, we all know that we should exercise. And, you know, I have a weight room here in the garage, but honestly, I do weights to help me be stronger and more competitive, but it's not really fun. And the difference in pickleball is it's fun. And there's a big social aspect as well. Um, I like being very competitive in what I do. And so I've really enjoyed learning and getting better. Uh, my wife loves to play pickleball. We each play about four or five times a week. She's, she found that she's not really a competitive person, but she plays for fun. And there's a large group of people that just play for fun. So there's a social aspect. And um, we had moved here to Camino Island. We really didn't know very many people. But when we joined the club, we started meeting people. And now we literally have a couple hundred friends that play pickleball and, you know, you link up with all kinds of other things. So that's a very strong uh, factor about pickleball. And um, so um, let's get started. Our goal today is learn about the game. What do you need? What do you find it? How do you get started? And um, that's where we want to go today. And we're going to go over the rules. That'll take a few minutes. But, um, you know, it's just to get you started to know what the game is. In the second session later, we'll cover more details, a little bit more about certain shots and skills about the game as well. That'll be in two weeks. So let's first uh, take a look at what do you need? Okay, guess what this is? I know, it's a pickleball. So it's actually an outdoor pickleball. There's two different kinds. This one is a very hard plastic. You can hear it when you hit it. 
and it bounces, it's very lively. It's got 40 holes in it. So it's an outdoor ball. There's also an indoor ball. The indoor ball has 26 holes. They're a little bigger. The ball itself is actually a little more rubbery. It's a little more spongy. It's a little softer. So when you play indoors at like a YMCA, you're using a little different ball and it plays a little different. But for today, you just need to know there's an outdoor ball and indoor ball. The other thing that you need pickleball is a pickleball panel. So you can see the size of it here. And this particular panel is made by a company called Paddle Tech. Okay, they're a US manufacturer and there's literally hundreds of pickleball paddles out there available. As far as getting pickleball paddles, pickleballs themselves, pickleball shoes, they're available at possibly your local sporting goods. Amazon has hundreds of all the above. Also, there's a very good uh, company, pickleballcentral.com. They're located in Kent, Washington, where pickleball started right here in the state of Washington in 1965. And um, pickleballcentral.com, they have all this equipment and you can try things and uh, they're a very good source for pickleball items. So there's the two things. I would uh, definitely recommend this is a pickleball shoe or outdoor tennis shoe. This one is made by Head, but there's very good. There's several good models. Head, Adidas, Asics. Um, you know, there's many different ones. I would recommend using a cork shoe though, because um, as you see here, the south side edge of the shoe and also the heel is made. I'll get this uh, camera right here, so that your weight doesn't roll over. If you wear uh, running shoes playing pickleball, they're made to go straight ahead and they're great for that. But um, they also can catch an edge and roll your ankle over, where these are a stable platform and they don't roll over like that. So I definitely recommend you use, uh, find a pickleball shoe or a cork shoe. Uh, as you can see, these have been used a bit. So they're wearing through the outside but they always have a, a good tread on the bottom too to grip the surface. The last item as far as equipment I use, is these are some uh, glasses that I wear for eye protection. Uh, you could wear some good sunglasses, safety glasses, even just regular glasses. But these I made, I got racquetball glasses and cut the lenses out. I sweat a lot. In fact, as soon as I see a pickleball, I start sweating. It's that way. So I cut these lenses out. That way, when I sweat coming down, it doesn't block my vision. So it's something I modify to use a Dremel tool to make that. But I do recommend that you get some kind of eye protection. These right here are made so the pickleball cannot contact your eye. Um, when you're playing across from someone, most of the time you have would have time to move out of the way. But when you have someone playing right beside you and there's a hard shot and it bounces off the paddle and you turn like this, it's they're only six feet away. So that's where the eye protection is recommended. And I have seen someone get hurt in the eye and so it's something I suggest. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at a pickleball court, which it, it fit right here on this clipboard. Pretty good, huh? So this is a pickleball court and um, the, the width of it is 20 feet across the baseline here. The length is 44 feet and it's divided into a half. Right here is the net. Um, each side has a right side and left side. Now when I say that, it's like if you're standing here facing the net, I call that the right side. And over here facing the net is left side. And there's a dividing line there. This, this line here is, it goes all the way across. It's uh, seven feet from the net. <coughs> and this is the non-volley zone, okay? But in pickleball, it's called the kitchen. When you end up playing a lot and people always talk about being in the kitchen, well, they mean, inside the non-volley zone. 
the word itself kind of defines what it is. Uh, a volley in pickleball is a ball that you hit in the air. Typically, it comes up above your waist in this area, and you, you hit the ball before it bounces. That's a volley. A normal ball would bounce on the court and play it, so that's a normal uh, bounce type ball. So this non-volley zone is telling us that you cannot be standing in here close to the net and hit the ball in the air. It keeps people away from the net when they attack the ball in the air. Um, let's see, so that's seven feet, uh, 15 feet here. Each half is 10 feet on this dimension. Um, okay, now the lines, uh, always going around the court, define uh, zones that you would serve to. Most pickleball is played with two people playing two people. So the court that you have to cover isn't as great as uh, like in tennis. That court is 2,106 square feet, where a pickleball court is 880 square feet. So it's only 40% as big as a tennis court. That's why there's less running by far in playing pickleball than you would in tennis. Um, okay, so let me um, let's see here. That covers a lot of that. Let me check my outline here. So how would you get involved in pickleball? Uh, I would suggest that you uh, search for a local club, like I found on Camino Island here, our Camino Stanwood Pickleball Association. We were 200 members two years ago. Now we're at 350. I mean, it's a growing sport. People love it. But in the nearby towns from us, up in uh, Mount Vernon, there's the Skagit Valley Pickleball Association or Marysville. These places are only 30 minutes away, but uh, many towns have their own pickleball clubs. So that's a great, great way to find out about pickleball. Um, also, there may be uh, through YMC if you have one. There's a uh, very common for YMCs. YMCs to have indoor pickleball. And I also uh, know in my, um, my wife's hometown is Salina, Ohio. They have pickleball courts. And if you call the local city recreation or county park system, they will tell you about where's courts and you know help you get lined up on how to get into them. There's a, um, a website too that I'm gonna mention. It's called playtimescheduler.com. Again, I'll repeat that, playtimescheduler.com. So the playtime scheduler part is all like one word. What that site does is you go on there and you will need to have a username and a password, but the basic access is free. And it will show you, once you put in your zip code, local pickleball courts near you. And it's also a way to sign up to play on those courts. So um, here, many of the clubs in this area use that as their scheduling system. Um, you might uh, definitely try that out and see how that works for you too. Um, let's see, and I, I would suggest that the clubs and possibly YMCA, but they probably have some kind of uh, training class that you can get into as a beginner. Our club here has several training systems. One is you know, pickleball one and two, that's for the beginners that they don't even have a paddle. They want to learn how to play, but that's our part of our club. And then after that, we have a 10 week training system that goes through all the details of the game and learning more. And we also have a mentoring system. And uh, I think I know many clubs have some forms of training and introduction to pickleball that you can you can find out on how, how to play the game. Um, as far as safety, I wanted to mention one other thing besides the court shoes and eye protection is it's not a good idea in pickleball as you work in the baseline up towards the non volley zone. If someone hits a lob, uh, don't run backwards or back pedal like I'm doing right now. I better watch my heels because if you're trying to back pedal and you catch your heel, that could cause a fall. Uh, the way to get a ball that's back behind you is you turn and you run back like this and then play the ball. So these are safety things I wanna mention so that you know about them as a heads up. Um, okay, so 
that's some background. We've looked at cart. Now, what I would, I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through my summary of pickleball rules. This is a two-page document. Um, this is not from the Professional Pickleball Association or anything, but I made a list of the rules to cover the main parts about the game. Um, um, Nicole and um, others at Senior Planet are putting this as a document on their website so you can download it. So you don't have to remember all of them or make copious amount of notes. You can just go get the document and take a look at it. I'm gonna go through the rules and um, with you. Uh, first of all, uh, what is a legal serve? Get my pickleball. Um, a, a serve in pickleball is using an upward motion. And it's kind of like, just like if you're playing softball and you step forward and toss the ball like this, a serve in pickleball is the same way. You have to serve it from below your waist. It has to be an upward motion. And the other part is the paddle cannot be above your wrist like this. The paddle needs to be below your wrist like this. So, you know, in tennis, you throw a ball up and you serve it overhead. Well, that's not pickleball. Pickleball, you start with the ball out in front of you, you take a step and you strike the ball in an upward motion. So it goes down into the other court. Uh, you can, in pickleball, drop the ball, let it bounce once and hit it as well. Either way is fine. I don't really recommend one over the other one. So you're serving. Grab our court again. Your serving always starts on the right side of the court. So no matter where you are, where you play pickleball, you always start on the right side and the start of the game. And most courts um, have a standard or default that on, on our commando courts, we always start from the, the north side. Whoever's on that side, they start the game. Every court's different. But the first serve of the game, has to go from this side across to the opposite corner into that court. And so that's that's where the serve goes. Now the serve, you have to stand behind the baseline here and not step in until after you've contacted the ball. The ball must land within this rectangle on this center line, baseline, and sideline. This line right here is actually considered part of the non-volley zone. And so if the ball lands here, it's considered to be in the kitchen or in the non-volley zone. And that would be a service ball. So it has to land past this line, but within these lines right here. And um, that's a serve. If you score a point, then the server moves from this side to the other side, they would switch. And then the next second serve would go from this corner, to this corner. That's how pickleball goes. Then if you serve from here and you lose that point, then the ball goes to the other team. And this is their right side. They would start serving from this side and it has to go to there. So serving is cross corner, okay? Um, now, um, the, the other thing in pickleball is there's a rule called the two bounce rule. And this is when the game starts, the server, the serving team here would be serving and this team over here receiving the ball, they have to let it bounce before they hit the ball. So what you find out is the person receiving will be standing at the baseline back here so they can let it bounce and then still return the ball. That's the first bounce. When the receiving team returns the ball anywhere in this court. And again, the serve has to go within this uh, side right here, but the return can go anywhere. This team here also has to let the ball bounce before they play it. So that's where you get the two bounce rule. The serve has to bounce, the return has to bounce. So what you find is that the two people on the serving side will be standing where my fingers are here. They'll stand slightly outside the court so they can let it bounce and then return the ball. Now, once they have returned the ball, that's the second bounce. Now, anybody can 
be playing the ball. In fact, your goal in pickleball is to move up and make your way up to this non-volley zone. And so you will see players that your serving will start here outside. This person will be back. They have to let it bounce on the receiving side. But this other person on this team will be up here standing just outside the kitchen. So they're ready to be on offense is what I would call it. And these players too, after they return, they'll work their way up to be up on the kitchen line. Uh, the reason, why would you wanna be up on the kitchen line seven feet from the net? Well, the, the shots at the kitchen, they can you can bounce the ball in the kitchen and step in the kitchen to play it. So it bounces in, stand back a little bit more. The bounces, you can play the ball and step in the kitchen and step out of the kitchen. But if the ball comes up above your waist, up in this area here, you can hit it on the volley and you can attack the ball. And I like those. I like to hit the ball hard. I don't be honest with you. <laughs> it probably comes from my volleyball genes that I developed for a long time. So um, that's uh, that's a few of the basic rules. Let's see where we're at here. Um, okay, a ball that touches the line, lands on the line, or inside the court is considered in. The ball has to be completely outside the line. So if my sheet here is the line, if it lands on the line, it's in. It has to land outside the line where the base of the ball is just a small round part where it contacts, but that ball would be out. This is in, this is in. Landing on the edge of the line is considered in, but this is out. So there has to be a gap there. Now, one of the important things about pickleball too is who calls it? And uh, it works out quite well. And the rule is that when you're receiving the ball, it comes to your side, it's your job to make the call. So you call it in or you call it out and that's the call. Um, and uh, commonly, if, you're, if the ball is coming to me as a player, I'm gonna concentrate on hitting it. My partner should be helping me by calling it in or out. And um, if, if the people receiving the ball, neither one of them are sure, they can ask the other team, well, what did you see? And most recreational play, people are casual. They, they, they may say, no, I thought it was out, even though that's to their detriment. But most people are honest about it and they're relaxed and everything's fine. And, and sometimes they might say, nobody really knows, so we'll, play a point over, but that's in recreational play. So um, the important part summary there is when you're the receiving team, it's your call. So you should be paying close attention to where the ball lands and make the call. Let's see here, covered that, got that. Okay. So when you're serving, and you do the interchange of play and you win that play, that's how you get a point. So to get points, you need to be serving. You win the play, you get a point, okay? And that's when the server in doubles would switch sides to the left side then and serve from the left side. If they win that play again, they get another point. So they switch back to the right side. So if you can keep getting points, the server keeps moving back left side and right side during the game. Um, if you're in the middle of a game and the server serves, but the other team wins a point, if they're the first server, then your other teammate would be the second server, they get to do their serve then. So the normal process in pickleball is that um, each team gets both servers to serve until they lose the serve, okay? Um, now let's cover scoring. Um, this is important that before every serve, each server must call out the score. And that's something, honestly, you'll need to get used to. Um, it's something in pickleball that you have to get used to remembering the score. So when they're getting ready to serve, listen to them. And they might say the following numbers, four, two, one. 
Well, that's the score. Now, what does that mean? Four in this case would be my team score. So we have four points. The two, which is the second number, is the other team score. So that's how many points they have. And the third number is the server number. In the case that I just gave you, four, two, one, one is the first server. So when my team first started serving, I was on the right side of the court and I was the first person to start serving. So I'd get ready to serve. I say four, two, one, and then go ahead and serve. We lose the serve, it goes to my partner. Now what they would call out is four, two, two. Again, the score is still the same, four to two, but there's a second server. So that would be a four, two, two in their score. And that's how the scoring goes. Um, now that um, we have that understood, now I'll give you the exception, okay? <laughs> this is at the start of the game, the very first serve of the game. The score is, remember it's my team, your team, and then the server number, right? So when you're starting the game, it's zero, zero, and then two. And you say, wait a minute, that's the first server. Why are they saying that? Well, when you're starting the game, that's the one exception that only one person gets to serve. And that's it. You, when you lose that serve, it goes to the other team. So that's why it's called 002. It's kind of like they're the second server and that's it, you know? Other, and some people have learned to call it 00 start. That's fine too. Um, uh, most people have gotten used to hearing 002 and they know that's the start of the game. Once the serve goes to the other side, then let's say my team serve first, 002, we didn't win the point. Ball goes the other side. Their first serve then is 001 because that's the first server of the game for them. If they get a point, they switch sides. And then now it's one, zero, one, okay? The other team has one, that team has got zero, still the first server is a one, okay? That's enough about <laughs> keeping score. Um, you know, the game is fun and it's, it's a lot of social, but uh, keeping score is something you'll just have to get used to. Um, Oh, and then the game goes to 11 points and you must win by two. So it's 10 to 10 to really finish the game. The team has to get 12 in order to win the game 12 to 10. Okay, so that's the rule summary. There's a document, you can pick it up later. So you don't have to try to remember. And then of course, online, you can watch pickleball videos on YouTube. There's millions. and you know, classes and trainers and all kinds of things that you can have access to in addition to more rules. So as far as uh, warm up and getting ready to game, and if you want, you can do this along with me. But um, what I like to do in warming up for a game is first just uh, use some twisting. You twist your torso, uh, pick a ball. You're doing a lot of like hit the ball, hit the ball, they're short, quick movements, but you're twisting. So it's good to loosen up your toes all range. You get down, loosen up. And then for starting your shoulders, first go uh, both shoulders forward. It's kind of like doing the butterfly swim if, you're, if you've ever tried that. And rotate the shoulders around about eight, eight or 10 times. Then reverse. Reverse and go backwards. So you're pushing your shoulders and go back as far as you can, get your shoulders loosened up. Next thing I'd like to do is get a hold of my elbow and pull my arm across and up and down. That stretches this uh, rotator cuff, latissimus dorsi muscle right here. So stretch that out by going up and down. Do the other side, up and down. Get that shoulder stretched out, I like to stretch them both. And then the last thing I like to do is get your arms like this, and just push your wrist back to 
twist, you're twisting your shoulder, but you're lifting up that socket there. So push back and get that loosened up. And then reverse it, go upwards like this, and just push it back in the upwards motion. Do some of those. Okay, so that kind of gets your shoulders loosened up. And let me just my screen on the picture. Um, next thing I like to do is bring your knees up and again, go kind of go from your knee to your elbow, the opposite one, this. So get some of those in. Um, probably the, the last thing that I like to do with my legs a little bit more is um, try to touch your toes. I haven't been able to touch my toes since the seventh grade. My legs are too long. But try to touch your toes and you can feel the, the hamstring stretching out in your calves. So just stretch it for uh, 15, 30 seconds. That's pitched out. Go back and forth a little bit to stretch these muscles again. And the last thing, stretching wise, like to spread one leg up, one leg back, and push on that calf and stretch that calf out. You can see that I'm not quite visible there. So, push that leg out and stretch your, your calf muscle and the Achilles tendon in your, in your foot. You're stretching that out. And then, switch sides. And same thing, the other side. You should feel that calf stretching out and your Achilles tendon and your foot stretching out as well. Okay, so that gets just a little bit of a warm up. The thing that um, the goal players will do is one, be standing right, right along here, both players on this side and the other players here. So you're just standing right outside the kitchen or the non volley zone. And you just do some thinking practice. I think just contacting the ball. Softly, and you're running at balance in the kitchen. And the other player returns it over the net, hits it softly, and bounces in the kitchen. So you're just doing some soft shots like this, bouncing it back and forth. And you always end up like doing two steps here, two steps here, two steps here to get warmed up. So you might think for like five or six minutes. So we'll say they're warmed up. Then you can move back to the baseline and get some harder shot and also do some serves. Uh, one thing I will show you with pickleball too is that um, pickleball is a little different than uh, like I would compare it to tennis players. Tennis players get used to swinging the ball, uh, swinging their, their rackets really hard and level, but if you hit the ball that way in pickleball, sometimes the ball drops more. It's, it's a lighter ball. It's like a wiffle ball. And it couldn't catch the net. So pickleball is more of a upward motion like this. Start to paddle low and then contact the ball in front of you and come up on it. So it's this kind of motion here. And then backhand rise would be this this would be a backhand. You start low, you come up on the ball and through the ball. Pickle ball motions too are not big swings. They're not like cocking it back here and coming through with a big follow through like that. Pickle ball motions are really in the paddle ready position, just like this. And then you have quick motions like this. It's a very quick game. So you need to always have a paddle ready and you're playing with paddle ready. Okay, so the, the motion though is the main thing I want to mention. You see me 
like bobbing and weaving here. Use your legs when you come up and place the ball like this. That way it's a nice smooth play and you keep the ball under control. So let's see where we're at. Um, that's the score, the rules following along. Uh, what we have now is there's two videos, which I think um, Johnny is getting ready to queue up. Yes. Uh, so Johnny, when you're ready, just run one and just go ahead and run there. These two videos are, are people from our club last Sunday just playing a normal game of pickleball. And I got a little commentary along with them. Okay, so here comes the video, folks. Serve goes to the opposite side of the court. They started to play. Worked their way up to the non-volley zone. And then Mike got a ball that was a little higher, so he's able to put that away. And now Brett's going to announce this. 5-1-1, which means five points for the serving side, one for the receiving, and one... The third number is the first server. So now Mike's the second server. And he just served a ball that Deb couldn't get to. So he scored a point. And he's on the left side of the court. Served across to the right side. That ball is out of bounds. <laughs> and... Uh, so now Mike moves back over to the right side. And he'll announce the score. So what's the score, Brett? 7-1-2. Uh, 7-1-2. Two. Seven, one, two. Seven on this side, one on the other side. Second server. And there's a volley. Looks like Mike and Brett on this side close to me, sir, scored another point. Serving to the opposite side. Ball's returned. Oh, looks like they couldn't get to it before it bounced twice. So that means it's a side out, and the other team will be serving. Again, starts on the right side, serves across to the opposite side, and then starts the volley. Mike was able to put the ball away on that one. Curtis is moving to the left side of the court. That's when I call that, it's when they're facing the net. Serves it to the opposite corner and then starts to play. Mike returned it, but go in the net. All right, 8 1 1. That serve, 8 1 1. It's a high lob type ball. And looks like that ball was out. 9 1 1. <laughs> if you hit your own partner, that's a side out. <laughs> There's a good example of what not to do. <laughs> Serve goes opposite corner. Return. Return. Oh, good volley. Good volley. But ended up balls going out of bounds. Off the corner. And Teresa put the ball away. Hit it too short and uh, Sarah couldn't get to it. So that's a point for the serving side. Serve goes opposite corner. And out of bounds. So that would be another point scored. Servers switch sides. And Dave will serve to the right side. Cross court. And that serve was wrong. So that's a side out. Now Sarah will have the serve. <laughs> Don't bother the scary man. Alright, what is your on the team? So that ball was in the net. So we got second server. So he called out the score. I don't think you could hear that. 
but it was. Yep. <laughs> you already served an ace. What, what are you doing with this uh, footage, Rick? <laughs> it's a uh, pickleball. It's going to be on the news today. Is it like blackout footage? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Jordy serving, opposite court, return. Oh, too bad. So, that was a good volley right there. Now, well, so you've heard about this, the rules and the scoring and all that. You got to see a little interchange of pickleball. So, that's the basics of the game. Um, and um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how do you get into a game on your local courts? And many courts will have um, a number of courts, whether it's four or six. And at times, like our club, we have six courts that are really two tennis courts that we convert to pickleball courts by setting the nets up. So on a Sunday afternoon, a nice day, we might have 30 or 35 people that are wanting to play. Uh, every court you go to out there, they typically have some system where people line up to be in line to play. In our courts, we have a, a cart with tubes like this, and you put your paddle in. So the people that are waiting to play, you just put your paddle in there, line them up, and as soon as the game finishes, four people come off, and the first four paddles go on. And you move the other four paddles forward. Uh, at other courts that you'll see, Sometimes there's paddle racks on the side of the fence, or they might stack them on the ground. Um, there's different ways that people do things, but as you come up to a new court and you ask them, they will tell you, how does this work at our courts? And uh, they'll show you how you get in, in the queue to get on the court. So just know about that. Um, and pickleball people are typically really friendly and really inclusive. And a lot of people can play the game. We have people that are younger, older, um, people that have had hip replacements and knee replacements. Uh, since there's not lots of running, long distances and so on, a few steps at a time, you can have a good pickleball game. And you notice in the videos, yes, you hear laughing and fun <laughs> while people are playing. That's the nature of the game. And uh, for people that want competitive pickleball, yeah, there's that too. So uh, you, you can get that if that's what you're looking for and you've developed your skills that way. Um, if you come up to a new court and you haven't played, people may ask you, and if you've done some sports, well, uh, what's your rating? You know, that's a question you might get when you show up. And people that have uh, learned the rules, um, can keep score, can hit the ball back in the court sometimes, uh, that's considered to be like a 2.5, your basic novice level skills. So that's your starting point. Uh, if you show up at a court, though, you're not going to know what your rating is, but you just say, I'm a new player and I'm wanting to learn. And then what people will do is help put you with the right people to get started. OK, um, so there's that. And then um, in pickleball, yeah, the 2.5 is a novice player and a, a typical really good player at a local club is a 4.0. And once you get to a 4.5 and above, that's considered like local or national pro level type players. So there is a rating system. In our second session, I'll cover more about that. But today, that's the basic thing of what you need to know. So um, 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 Nicole, Dave, Johnny, uh, we're going to go to the question and answer time. So uh, however you do that, please feel free. So, um, so while Johnny's reviewing the, the uh, questions in the chat, go ahead, uh, Robin, go ahead and unmute. If you're playing to 11 by two, why is it important to keep up with the server number? Okay, um, each team, uh, you're playing doubles, gets both servers get to, to serve. So when you first get it, you're server one, and then everybody knows that's the first server. And when you've lost your serve, it goes to two. That way everybody knows, is this the first server or the second server? When the second server is done, then the ball, it's a side out, it goes to the other team. 
So that's why you need to keep track of which server number it is. Okay, so, okay, that's what I didn't understand. So the side out is after both members of the double team have scored. Or, or, yes, or out. Yeah. Yes, got it, sir. Got it, thank yes, you. Sir. And, and the only exception to that is the very start of the game. Both servers don't get to serve. It's just one server. And that's just, again, that's a rule that was made. And yep. the one server serves. And then after you lose that serve, then it's the side out to the other team. Thank you. Now I understand. Great. Th thanks, Robin. Go ahead, Joan. I guess that's me. Yep. Um, my question is with a pacemaker and a bionic knee, both on the same side, um, is it wise to start this exercise program or this activity without a doctor's okay? Boy, I, I'm i feeling uh, legally responsible here. <laughs> yeah, answer. I'm sorry you have to walk that line. No, no, it's okay because... It, it, other people are thinking the same thing in a different situation. I would definitely check with your doctor. Um, and I've been able to tell you a little bit about pickleball where there is a little running, but it's a few steps here, a few steps here, a few steps here. And so there is some cardio to it. There is some strength to it. Um, now, whether that would cause a problem with a pacemaker or not, I'm not, I'm not authorized to say, but um I would guess that most doctors have patients that play pickleball. Um, my doctor, I tell, I tell him, you know, I've been playing pickleball for two years and he says, keep doing what you're doing. Because <laughs> everything, I've been blessed. I'm fortunate, I'm, I'm very healthy from doing that. So I think it's a good idea. Um, I, I'm hoping that you can play, but the pacemaker part, I'm not too sure about that. Okay, I understand. Um, I like the exercises you showed. Sorry, Jenny. Oh, that's okay, Dan. That's okay, Joan. Or Joanne, yeah. I should say. Joanne. Um, uh, before we will go on to Dan, I wanted to, uh, Rick, there was a question that may be related to Joanne's question um, from Elle. Uh, she says, I have also uh, osteoarthritis in my knee. Did I hear Rick correctly, correctly that he also has knee issues, but pickleball hasn't been painful for him to play? She's feeling hopeful in learning. Could you, uh, and then maybe Elk, you can raise your hand if you want to expand more on your comment in the chat room. Go ahead, Rick. Okay. Yeah, my um, my right knee was, you know, a knee is a socket like this that rotates and there's cartilage in there or there should be, but my knee had gotten to where it was getting uh, a good part of bone on bone. So, and I've been to the orthopedic clinics like six times in six years, you know. Um, so the jumping was causing the problem. Once I changed my workout, uh, things that I do differently now, I don't do long distance road running. And I had done that a lot in my history. You know, I was uh, doing, at one time I did triathlons, you know, but um I had to stop doing the high impact like that. That is a lot of impact force when you're running, even though I like to run. So stop that. And then a couple of weight exercises, I do about 12 different things, but I took a couple of things out, basically things that reduce the impact on my knee. And uh, number two, pickleball isn't making it worse. It's not that my knee healed itself, but I'll tell you, I, I can play pickleball for two hours or three hours, and my knee's a little sore, but it's not bad. And there's not much cartilage in my right knee in that socket. So I do get um, a hyaluronic acid shot into my knee. It's a grease job, basically, even though it's a long needle. But they put that behind your kneecap, and it helps helps me. And that, I, you know, I love it. Um, I'm having a great time. And, and the knee's been stable ever since I started playing pickleball. Okay, so I hope that helped also Elle with her question. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question on what to look for in a racket. You mentioned that they're available all over, but what, what do you recommend looking for for a beginner? <laughs> this, this could be a really, really long answer. But 
we're, we're starting out here, so we're going to keep it simple. Um, I would look for a, a modest price racket. Now, when I say that, in the $60, $70 range, you can get a decent racket or, or paddle, okay? Tennis players use rackets. Pickleball players use paddles. So that's something to work on. But a, a good uh, uh, pickleball paddle from Paddletech, the first one I got was their Genesis G6. It's about a $70 paddle. It works fine. And as I learned to play, I wanted to get like the best paddle. Well, I, that came later, you know. Uh, as far as what you look for, um, you know, I would just stick to an average. They're around eight ounces and that's an average size. I got, I found one that had a grip that was larger, but you know, my hands are larger. I'm six foot three and I have larger hands, but I would just stick to a standard regular paddle. Uh, my wife and I got a, a set from Amazon and that's our visitor set. It's, it's made by Neo Pipo, but it's a $70 set. And you get two paddles and a, uh, three balls and a little bag as well. And it's fine as a starter paddle. So um, I'd say keep it simple, you know, as you get started. And uh, you can even uh, call Pickleball Central and they'll give you good advice and probably give you five choices of, you know, starter type paddles. I hope that's helpful, but. No, that's a, good. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's a big topic of discussion. Like, Almost every time I play pickleball, oh, did you get a new paddle? How much was that? How does that work? You know, and so on. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to mention that uh, we will be back for part two on the 29th of this month of March. So there is a part two session to today's. So if you guys weren't able to get your answers question or your, I'm sorry, your questions answered today, then jot them down, you know, remind yourself of those questions so you can bring them back to part two session, uh, which will be on the 29th of March with Rick. Uh, we'll continue this discussion. Uh, we could maybe take um, one more, perhaps one more question. I, I do say that uh, somebody asked about paddles and, and shoes. Uh, a couple of people asked about shoes as well. If like tennis shoes that they would normally wear for tennis would be good enough. That could be a, uh, maybe a quick answer for that person. Uh, and then uh, there was questions about singles and doubles. Is it always default to doubles or can people play singles if they prefer playing singles when it comes to things like tennis? And, yeah. and, so. and I can answer that one. Um, what you find on the pickleball courts is that, well, I tell you, maybe 8% of the time, people are playing doubles, two on two. Now, singles is fun. Now you're into where there's lots of running. Uh, honestly, typically uh, younger people play singles. Uh, not that older people can't. I play some singles. Uh, and now you're running, you know, two steps as best as you can one way and then 10 steps back and there's a lot of running to it. So uh, our general pickleball club and people, it's, it's like always two on two. So that's what you'll find out. And uh, we usually end up with a cartoon. So I've got one for today. This is for our normal lunch and learn. So, so this says, let's take a moment to remember those we've lost to dogs and roof gutters. So <laughs> someone related to pickleball, this is badminton. Okay. And <clears throat> so everybody have a great day and let's give Rick another big thank you for a wonderful talk and we're looking forward to having you come back rick this was great really. thanks Dave. thanks johnny you're welcome thank you everybody nicole did you want to add anything before we all leave can you guys hear me yes yeah uh no just want to thank rick for a wonderful presentation and we look forward to seeing you all on the 29th